What is going on, everybody? My name is Zell Prince, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. Now, today, we're going to be reacting to another SCP by Dr. Bob. And I've been wa wa watching a lot of Dr. Bob's content in the past, as you guys may know, but I haven't been reacting to Russian some of his stuff as of late because I've been wanting to save it for reaction videos. So, thanks to the votes that you guys put on the other day, and to the community poll that I put out, which I will make making a separate update video, video on that separately, uh, we were going to react to SCP-973 Smokey. Now, I think I may have heard of this SCP when I was getting myself associated with the SCP Foundation almost three years ago. I think I may know what this SCP is, judging by the th judging by its thumbnail. But I'm going to make sh I'm not entirely sure because I'm not haven't looked anything up about that SCP. I don't even know that that particular SCP's number. But this might be the same SCP that I might, may or may not know. We're going to find out right now, and. That's about it. So we're going to have to react to this in three, two, one. I always do that. I do I do the countdown the wrong way. Whatever. Three, two, one, go. A group of friends are driving down the highway late at night. They're on their way home from a concert, and after the long night of dancing and partying, all of them are feeling quite tired. The radio is turned off, the and after so much loud music, the silence is refreshing. No one is talking at all, and in fact, the driver notices that both his girlfriend sitting next to him, as well as his friend in the back seat, have fallen asleep. The driver tries to make sure that he doesn't do the same as the car moves down the long stretch of straight, empty highway. The driver's eyes start to grow heavy, though. He can feel the weight of sleep shitty. starting to press on him. He turns the radio on at a low volume, but that only staves off the drowsiness for a moment. He can't fight the approach of sleep any longer, and his eyes start to close. As he drifts off to sleep, his foot presses down slightly more on the accelerator. The driver's head slumps to the side as the car gains speed and begins to pull to the right of where it crosses the Did white that? line, marking the edge. Of if you're tired, people, don't don't go out driving. Just stay where you are, pull over, or just fall asleep there. The highway. The tires dip off the road into the dirt, and the sudden change causes the driver to jerk back awake. He quickly swerves the car back onto the road. The sudden jolt causes both the passengers to wake up. Is everything okay? The driver tells them that he just swerved to... to avoid an animal in the road. That's right, nothing to be worried about. They can go back to sleep. <laughs> As both of his friends close their eyes and try to go back to sleep, the driver spots something. Lights have appeared in his rearview mirror. It's a pair of headlights. He didn't notice a car pulling out or speeding up behind him, but he must have missed it when he was dozing off. His heart is still racing from when he drifted off the road, and he's trying to regain his composure, but it's about to get a whole lot harder, because when he looks in the mirror again, he sees that the telltale red and blue lights of a police cruiser have lit up behind him. Oh crap, oh no, oh no, the driver says out loud. Everyone is awake now and aware of the cop behind them. They grow nervous and start freaking out. Not all the activities they had partaken in at the concert were, strictly speaking, technically legal in this state. What do we do? Uh -oh. The driver asks. <laughs> You've got to pull over, says his girlfriend. The cop car's sirens come on. This is serious. But then something strange happens. They hear a voice in the car, coming over the radio. Okay, this is definitely the SCP I heard of before. Just by here, because I remember that SCP can speak through the radio to the drivers. I think, if I remember correctly, last time I heard about this, he's, the driver, the SCP was saying to run. It's too quiet to hear. But when this the driver turns it. up the volume, definitely the message comes through loud and clear. It's a gruff voice that keeps repeating the same phrase over and over. You better run. Yeah, that's it. How I, this is the SCP I actually know that I heard of. I never looked into it, but I know what, what this SCP What's is this now? message coming over the radio? They don't know, but the passenger in the back seat agrees with the voice. They've got to try and run. They have to get out of here. The driver's girlfriend is screaming to pull over. The cop car speeds up and is right behind them now, almost on their bumper. It's lights flashing and sirens blaring. The driver doesn't know what to do. Should he pull over? Should he try if to run? Over, friend, Everyone dead. is yelling. He starts to push down on the accelerator, but then thinks better of it. There's no way this old car can outrun a cop. Finally, he makes the decision to brake and starts to pull the car to the side of the road. The police car comes to a stop behind them. The sirens are off, but the bright lights are almost blinding. They sit in the car and await their fate. But nothing happens. The car is just sitting there behind them. After what feels like a long entities. while, the door of the cop car comes to, finally comes to, opens. 
SV-9. The three passengers watch silently as a highway patrol officer steps out and begins approaching their car. The driver tells everyone to relax, that this is going to be just fine, but the passenger in the back starts to panic. He can't get arrested. If he does, it will mean that he loses his scholarship, he'll get kicked out of school, his whole life will be over. The highway patrol officer reaches the car. Despite it being late at night, he's wearing dark aviator sunglasses that cover half of his face. He stands in front of the door to the car and waits. The driver, feeling nervous and afraid, rolls down his window. The police officer doesn't move or react, though. He just keeps standing next to the car. You guys are dead. Um, good evening, officer, the driver says. No response. The driver turns and looks at his girlfriend in the front seat, but all she can do is shrug. He turns back to the highway patrolman. Did we do something wrong? There's another long pause, but then the patrolman finally reacts. He bends over and leans in close, sticking his head practically through the open window and putting his tight-lipped face right next to the driver's. Do you... do you want my license and registration? The driver asks. The patrolman doesn't respond. He reaches up and slowly grabs the side of his dark aviator sunglasses. He pulls them down, and the driver finds himself staring into a pair of bright, red, glowing eyes. <laughs> Evil eyes. Everyone in the car starts to scream as the thing standing in front of them opens its own mouth to reveal a big, black, gaping hole with no gums or teeth, a horrifying void in its face that screams right back at them. As you may have already deduced, this was no normal traffic stop, and certainly not a normal highway patrol officer. No, the entity that this group of young adults encountered that evening was one that dozens before them had the same misfortune of running into, and one that the SCP Foundation is actively trying to stop from engaging in its frightening and dangerous behavior. This is SCP-973. Okay, before he goes further into talking about SCP-973, I, would, I want to say that I was correct and I have heard of this SCP before, because I remember it SCP-973 to be a police car and a police officer being a two separate entities. So the police car is in SCP-973-A, and the police officer is SCP-973-B. I don't remember what its level of occupation is. I don't know if it's Skeeter or Euclid. I have no idea. It's been three years since I last heard about this SCP in any way, shape, or form. So, we're going to go ahead and continue watching this, because I actually do remember hearing about this SCP once before. SCP-973 is not one, but actually two separate entities. See? The first, designated SCP-973-1, oh, is a police a cruiser that appears to be a model similar to those used by actual state troopers during the early 1970s, and its condition is much like you would expect for a well-used, nearly 50-year-old vehicle, with much of it being in an advanced state of disrepair. Yeah. Eyewitness accounts of SCP-973-1 have described the police car as having numerous dents on the doors and hood, cracks in the windshield, multiple rust spots, and a rear bumper that looks to be held on with duct tape. The vehicle's driver and sole occupant has been designated SCP-973-2. This humanoid figure has an appearance I've that resembles seen... a Caucasian male. I've heard of, of SCP-973-2 but not what it actually distinguishly looked like when I last looked at it. Uh, it was a long, it was like almost three, it was about three years ago when I first started to look into the SCP Foundation, but never got heavily into it until I started doing reaction videos. Um, I forgot, I forgot the name of the channel that, that I saw this off of, but it was from a top 20, top 22 scariest SCP is out there reaction vi video i had watched from another youtuber which made me a, a little bit aware of what this scp really is but not its full intentions it like i said it's been three years but i know what the channel is but i don't remember the name Bill in his late 40s that made that upload it is that dressed video. in the state trooper uniform that like 973-1 also looks to have come from the early 1970s and eyewitnesses have described him as being slightly overweight balding and sporting a handlebar mustache <laughs> Both the anomalous car Classic and its driver though. will appear at night in a specific location along a particular U.S. highway. It is unknown exactly what will cause SCP-973 to show up on this road, but Foundation researchers have hypothesized that its manifestation may be triggered when a vehicle accelerates over a certain speed. You may think you're safe, then, if you stay below a certain speed, <laughs> but, but unfortunately, you'd be wrong. Yeah. 
It's I unknown guess, exactly I, what. I guess SCP-7973 only appears on one particular stretch of road that people that the SCP Foundation tries to get people to avoid going on to. At least that's what I could think of. Speed limit infraction will lead to SCP-973's appearance, with reports ranging from 35 miles per hour all the way to 70. But when it does occur, the driver will find that they are now a target. SCP-973 will materialize roughly half a kilometer behind the targeted vehicle and will approach them at a high rate of speed. SCP-973-1 sirens will turn on and its lights will flash as it also somehow broadcasts a message into the targeted car that is picked up on the... If I remember correctly, doesn't SCP-973 also run its targets off the road if they don't stop? Dr. Bob would probably say, but I'm pretty sure that's what it also does if they do don't stop or don't pull over. Car's radio, a message that urges the driver to run, often accompanied by several expletives. In most cases, the targeted vehicle will abide by the instructions over the radio and begin to flee. Though it's unlikely that this is due to any mimetic effect, rather it would seem that most run out of pure terror. SCP-973 will then pursue the targeted car, leading to a high-speed chase. No matter how fast the targeted car is, though, the SCP-973-1 police cruiser will always be faster. And it typically takes no more than six minutes for them to be overtaken. SCP-973 seems to have no qualms about ramming into the fleeing car, yeah, which likely accounts for the extreme damage present on the patrol car. While it is unclear exactly what happens once 973 forces the targeted vehicle to stop, either through their own choice or by being rammed off the road, the results are quite disturbing. The vehicle that are fled will later be located somewhere near SCP-973's spawning location, usually within roughly six kilometers of the road. Whether the vehicles that are found that far from the road drove there in a panic or were somehow transported there by anomalous means isn't clear. What is clear is that the occupants of the cars met a truly grisly fate. Their bodies will show signs of extreme Ooh. violence and assault, including evisceration, and some have been so badly maimed and mangled that visual identification was impossible. Damn. The vehicles themselves are badly damaged, showing signs of impact from another vehicle, and severe burn damage is often present in the interior. So far, Yeesh. over 34 individuals and 19 vehicles have been designated as victims of SCP-973, though it is likely that the true number is much, much higher. Perhaps most terrifying of all, is that some of the victims... Well, yeah, because those numbers can be inconclusive if they don't know when SCP-973 started its hunting, started hunting and when SCP-973 was discovered. So it could be even far, even more numbers than what they just, what he just said. Survived. But are the Foundation has recovered five individuals from sites of SCP-973 attacks, who, in addition to their gruesome physical injuries, also suffer from varying levels of ongoing mental trauma. But why not just destroy the road that SCP-973 appears on, you well, ask? Well, it wouldn't have just well the Foundation had this same idea, and in 1983, the section of highway affected by SCP-973 was demolished in an attempt to stop it from manifesting. But this attempt failed, though. Else. All this led to was SCP-973 changing its location, where it immediately began engaging in the same deadly behavior. Yeah. It's like the hitchhiker. It, it, you just try to destroy the road, and... It will just materialize on a nearby road. You can't stop it. You just have to try to way, prevent the way from it attacking. Like the uh, SCP, I don't remember the number, like the the hitchhiking girl, ghost girl. I don't remember her exact number, but it was a while ago when I watched that video. But it's sim similar. You destroy the road, it will just manifest somewhere else. You can't permanently stop it. You just have to try and lim limit uh, contact with it. Numerous it's attempts have also been do. made to try and capture both 973-1 and-2. In one such event, several teams of SCP Foundation containment specialists Wait, were dispatched this? to its section of highway with the mission to subdue and contain the anomaly. After multiple attempts to get SCP-973 to appear by driving down the highway at various speeds, a car carrying several agents was finally successful, and they spotted the flashing red and blue lights of 973-1 behind them as the message telling them to run began playing over the radio. With no further warnings, the anomalous police car closed in on them, even faster than the agents were expecting, and immediately began ramming into their car. A van filled with additional containment specialists was dispatched to the area to help, and when they reached the area that the GPS tracker on the pursued car led them to, they found that they were too late. SCP-973 had pushed the agent's car far off the road, 
and was ruthlessly tearing their bodies apart. The arriving Thanks. containment team immediately began firing on 973 in an attempt to save their fellow Foundation agents. The team's Wait, weapons appeared to cause some injuries to 973-2, oh. showing that it is perhaps vulnerable to lasting damage just like the 973-1 vehicle is. In a post-mission interview, one of the agents described SCP-973's new appearance. His eyes were red, and his mouth, it was just a black hole. No teeth, no tongue, just a hole. Yikes. No other reports would come from this incident, though, as this agent was the only survivor. Really? SCP-973 killed the other nine agents and fled the scene. While it is believed that the Foundation team was able to wound the anomalous creature, it was neither contained nor incapacitated in any real sense. When the next report of a 973 incident occurred just nine days later. SCP-973's ability to seemingly appear at a new location and the difficulty it has shown in being contained has gotten it a well-earned Euclid classification. Oh, okay, so it's not Keter. The roughly 60 kilometers of highway on which it is known to appear is under satellite surveillance at all times, and all traffic between 10 p.m. and 4.30 a.m. is diverted along a non-highway detour route, by force if necessary. Unfortunately for the SCP Foundation and the general highway-using populace, these security protocols have necessitated frequent updates because while the area that SCP-973 engages in its predatory behavior on is well known, both the time of day during which it will appear and the area it seems to affect are expanding. Yikes. Now go and watch another entry from the files of Dr. Bob, like SCP-745, the headlights, for another anomaly that will make you question whether you should ever drive again <laughs> at night. And make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single anomaly as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archives. <laughs> Alright, that was a great, that was a cool ending. <laughs> but yeah, this is the SCP I heard of a long time ago, and now I know a little bit more about it than I did originally. I didn't, When I first heard about SCP-973, I didn't even know that they spent the special containment unit after it. I never even knew that when I heard that the first time. Um, and I never knew what the uh, SCP-973-2 even looked like because there was no. Uh, when I watched, uh, I forgot who I know who uploaded it, but I don't remember the name off the top of my back. I'll just probably put up uh, their YouTube name up on the co corner over here, over there where the video just ended. I'll probably put their name there there on screen so you go check out the video and what i watched from scp 973 but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed today's reaction video i've been meaning to watch this, this scp all week i just never had the chance to properly sit down and record and, and i'm gonna get getting back on my recording schedule very soon probably starting next week so stay in tune guys i got some more recording coming for you very soon I'm probably going to be recording another video as soon as I'm done with this because two oversimplified videos just came out last night when I'm recording this. And I have not reacted to them yet, and they're both very long, so keep in mind that this will will probably I'll probably get one out tomorrow and the next one probably out on Monday. So stay tuned you guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy today's reacting video. Like and subscribe, all that stuff guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!